Okay, so once you have your flat colors, what I did was I combined everything onto a combined layer um, by turning off the backgrounds and only having the line art on and the flat color layers. And then I held down option and then said layer merge visible. And I get this. Then what I did is I selected the, the empty space outside. Then I can do select inverse. And then I can do edit fill with white. All right. And so what it does is it gives me kind of a primer layer. Then I can move that down underneath my flatting layer. And the reason I do that is I can then double click on that priming layer, right? It also will fill in anything I didn't manage to color with white. And I can add a stroke as an offset. I can play with its size. And I'm thinking kind of as a sticker, you know, like this. That works pretty well on the outside. Yeah. OK, so now it works on all the different substances. I can get rid of that, um, any inconsistencies I have. Like I didn't fill in the, the O's. So I go to my just my flat color. I select it, select it, hold down, um, or use the magic, or use the paint bucket rather, hold down option, steal the color, drop that in. So you look for those kind of inconsistencies. This orange isn't quite right. So I'm going to go a little bit lighter with it. You try this one. It's a little bit better. And then I can see the big difference between these two. So one thing I can do between my flatting layer and my flat color is I can play with the opacity and kind of blend them in. So that might be interesting. Because orange and purple are so different, it just kind of dulls him out to gray, which isn't all that wonderful. So now what I'm thinking is instead of just flat color, I need to maybe have some duotones. If these are really the best flat colors I could find, and they're okay, they work. Let's see what doing some duotone would do. So you see that these are both cut edge duotone, which is hard edged. So this is how that works. What you do is you use your lasso. And what I'll, I'll just show you really quickly. I'm just going to take a whole bunch of this top part and just select it from my flat color layer. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to image adjustments, levels, and then I'm just going to brighten the midtones. And that will immediately give me some duotone, right? Or I can darken them. That will immediately give me some duotone. So if I do it, I just erase that layer. If I do it more consistently, this is how that might look. So I'm going to take my flat local color, like of the head, select it. And actually turn off contiguous so it just selects all of that orange. right? And then I'm going to use my lasso. I might duplicate it, Command J, right? And then I might brighten it up with levels. Find like a lighter version of that orange I like. And then I'm going to use my lasso because this is cut edge or hard edge duotone. And I'm going to just kind of circle and delete from where I think the shadows should be. So this is one way you can do duotone cut edge. It will only affect the orange because that's the only thing I copied onto that new layer. So make use of your layers. 
Now these shapes can feel somewhat arbitrary and that's okay. That's kind of the charm of duotone cut edge coloring. They're not as important as your, your line art, but they're definitely gonna bring out dimensions to your illustration. And these colors can still change. So do kind of one color family at a time. So I'm just doing the orange of the bull right now. And because this was my inspiration, it really helps the design come through. That duotone color. And you can zoom in, you can clean it up a little bit. But again, it's a spot illustration. We're not trying to get everything like a logo. And it's easy at the end to come in and clean it up. I can do a little cast shadow from the fork. A shadow on this nostril and on the back of the eyebrow here. Now you can do this kind of thing in Illustrator as well, of course, just building new shapes up on top. But this can be a lot more experimental. And because you can just do it on multiple layers, right? You're not committing to anything. It helps. Then I can see <laughs> what that orange with that blue in the shadows actually does. That's kind of interesting. Right. And then I can actually play with the opacity of the layer underneath. And that's kind of nice. So using digital, you know, there's lots of advantages. Okay. What's the next thing I want to do some duotones to? Well, why don't I contrast that cut edge duotone with a soft edged duotone for that green? Because that green's, a, I like it, but it's pretty strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it on my flat color layer with the magic wand and no contiguous. So it gets everything even inside the lettering, right? Then I'm going to duplicate it onto a, a new layer. Then that new layer, I'm going to use a gradient overlay and I can play with its opacity. You see how it's a radial gradient, so it's glowing from the middle. And that's pretty nice. So that's one way I can do it. I can duplicate that, and I can play with the gradient overlay and make this one linear and change the angle to suit the lighting of my duotone. I think kind of like that. And I can play with those opacities that both kind of come through. I'm going to set them to multiply. That multiplies a little. And I'll set them to normal. <laughs> if I do dissolve, it will give me a little bit of texture, which isn't terrible. That helps set, set it off too. So that's soft edge duotone. Yeah, I'll leave that when it dissolve. And then whenever you like the effects of something and you just want to turn it into regular rasterized content, you can right click and you can say rasterize layer style. 
And now that texture from the dissolved is just part of that layer. Then I can merge these two together. That's another way to rasterize. Just select those two, hit Command E, and now they're together. So that's a duotone, soft edge duotone of the green. And look what a difference that makes. Okay, and then if that works so well, I think I want to do it to the lettering, right? So I'll select all the lettering color, duplicate that play with a gradient. This time, not dissolve, but just normal, right? And this time, instead of it just being regular gradient, let's really give it something. Play with its angle. Play with its opacity. Now this is different than a duotone. This is full spectrum now, because I'm adding purple into my, my red and my orange. Even though it's subtle, this is an example of a subtle full spectrum. You can play with the scale. So there it's less subtle. And I can always customize these colors, right? Brighten it up a little bit. Make this a little bit redder, pinker. There we go. So coloring is, is tricky. So you want to find you know what works for you. And now that you've got those flat colors, you can just keep on playing with different layered variations. I like that. Okay. So now I might duplicate that again and do the same trick I did. And now take this gradient and make it dissolve. Take it to a lower opacity. And maybe try it radial. I could try some of these other ways of gradating it. Or I could try a different gradient. Since I'm doing full spectrum, I could do full rainbow if I wanted to. So those are your coloring options, flat color, Duotone cut edge, duotone soft edge, and full spectrum. And you can layer them up in lots and lots of different ways. <laughs> and by doing them on different layers, you're not going to screw things up so badly. There we go.